Alright, this is my video on how to change one of the modules on your 2004 to 2009 Toyota Prius. This is this kind of what we call here the second generation or Gen 2. Um, I've put a voltmeter on each of these modules. Um, they're very straightforward. You just put, you know, put your meter on one side and then you put, put it on the other and just measure the voltages and they should all be the same as you work down. Um, you know in the seven and a half to eight volt uh, range per module uh, We found I found that this one right here was way different than the rest of these um, Very straightforward. It's about six and a half volts. Whereas these were about seven and a half volts So um, I also did an internal resistance test on all of the cells with my uh, remote control um, with my RC battery um, charger and found that this particular cell was far different, far higher in internal resistance than the rest of these cells. So um, very, very straightforward. Uh, a simple volt test will tell you which one is bad. And so we found that this one is bad. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we, we've taken off all of the bus bars you see here. They just have uh, eight millimeter nuts. Uh, well, they're not eight millimeter, but they're driven by eight millimeter socket uh, nuts that hold the bus bar is on and the nuts are right there and I uh, just am setting the bus bar kind of aside and then underneath there are a bunch more of these screws or well, the screws that hold the modules in from below and they alternate one is on this side and then the next one's on the other side of the module and then this side the other side this side the other side etc and so what you want to do is you want to loosen all the screws up until the bad module and no further. So we've loosened all the screws, the bad modules right here, so we've loosened the screws all the way along here on this side and the other side. So that'll allow these to kind of move apart. You know, we can move these apart and then get enough room to pull this module out. You're just gonna undo the vent cap like that, you just take the vent cap off and you're gonna get enough slack in here this way to where this module comes this way. And then um, you're gonna set the bus bar out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the tripod and see if I can get this, get you to see what I'm doing here. So I've already loosened each of the screws with the with an eight millimeter um, socket. They're a little bit too tight for a screwdriver. So I went ahead and loosened them with that. And then I'm just gonna <clears throat> just back them out with the screwdriver. Okay, so I'm gonna set all the screws in one place, set the screwdriver aside. And then there's four bars. There's a bar here, a bar here, a bar here, and a bar here that holds this end plate on. And it kind of keeps all of the modules compressed together. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take the drain or the vent hose off it just kind of pops off and we're just going to loosen all four of these most of the strength of the battery pack really comes from these four bars the rest of the battery pack is kind of flimsy sheet metal not very uh, not very stout and so the bars kind of keep it all together.
Not the most exciting video I've ever shot in my life. But it is important. Alright, so now I've taken all four of these bolts out of the reinforcing bars. There's one six millimeter nut back on the back that you have to take off. keep it in the same pile and so now this bar this end plate can come off it wasn't very elegant and so you're going to just kind of want to give it a little bit of slack just enough slack just push it away to where you can pull the module, be careful of the green wires, you don't want to, those are temperature wires, you don't want to mess those up, and you just want to pull the module There's a set of wires underneath that I had not seen before. I unclipped it. And so we have the one bad module that I just pulled out of there. And I'm gonna take a magic marker while I'm thinking about it and put a red X on it so we know it's bad. I'm going to take the good module and we're going to make sure we alternate. We got positive here and positive here so the negative end is going to go the negative end is going to go on this side so I'm going to slip this back in here same position as the other one was. Pop the vent back on to both of the cells. So now the good cell that I bought on eBay that I tested is back in place. I'm just gonna kind of push everything together. And then comes the tricky part of getting the end plate back on. So I, I did make a mark, a magic marker mark right here to kind of let me know how far compressed the uh, all these modules need to be in order to get the end plate back in position. The end plate has two plastic nubs on the bottom that have to slip underneath this first module and that's the trickiest part is just getting it underneath. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and it, Put it on that first post, the first stud, and then on this side, I'm just gonna have to wing it. Actually, I'm gonna start on this side and work on the front. And this is honestly the very hardest part about the whole thing is just trying to get the modules back together. So we're pretty close. So I got I got this back side done. I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut back on. Kind of 
kind of keep it from moving. And then I almost have this one on. It's not quite compressed enough to get down around the shoulder of this stud. So I'm just gonna try to push it together. It is being a booger. I'm gonna cheat it just a little bit without messing up the stud. And it seems to have dropped right into place. And I'm gonna We have two cells right here. I don't really want to. Go together. There, there, it all fell into place just there. So now all the cells are even with each other. My magic marker mark is pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, put all four of these eight millimeter bolts back in. And once I get them pretty close, I'm going to draw them in together and uh, use these bolts to pull the pack tight together again. I would refrain from using air tools on this job just because of the delicate nature. So I have a ratchet here. A little stubby ratchet, it won't have a lot of torque. I'm just gonna run it and just work them together until it kind of draws it up nice and even. I'm gonna check everything and make sure I don't see anything out of place before I draw it up tight. I don't want to draw it up tight with it um, being out of place. That one went down. Kind of down, that one. Okay, they're all down. I'm not gonna go nuts with them. And so now I've replaced the one module and I can go ahead and put um, put the screws back in the bottom. Um, and you just wanna make sure that they're lined up. The holes are lined up and they all are. So all of them are lined up. You just wanna make sure and not cross thread any of them. So I'm not gonna go and do all these screws because that would be really, really boring. I'll go back and do it after I shut the camera down. But after you get them all in, you're gonna to wanna to put the bus bar back on and um, on both sides and then put the nuts on. Check your bus bar and make sure that it's nice, and, you know, that the, the bus bar, little copper bus bars are clean. They don't have any big corrosion on them. And uh, put them all together. on both sides, put the nuts on, and um, put all the covers back on. There's some black covers like this that cover over once you have the nuts on and torque down. But that's pretty much it. This is the 2000, this is a 2005 Prius battery, and I've just replaced one module. I've done this once before, and it worked perfectly. 
And so um, once I get this module put back together, we're going to put it in our 2005 Prius for testing. And that's pretty much uh, the lowdown on how to replace a um, bad module in your Prius battery.